Uh, yeah, I was hooking into that for the uh, fun. Stuart Hall is vice president of the Turtle Mountain Flywheel Club Stationary Engine Museum in Killarney, Manitoba. Right now, he's discussing one of the museum's most amazing exhibits with Neil Hathaway of nearby Deloraine. Hathaway is not just an interested observer. His great uncle, Bruce Hathaway, built this antique piece of farm equipment, which they believe is the world's first rotary combine. And we're just discussing today, did it have one big one or two small ones in it? But it was rotary. And uh, as I understand, there's two styles of rotary. One would be with centrifugal force and the other one would be sucking the chaff out of the grain. And I'm not even sure which one this would be, what his idea of that time was. But uh, it was a unique style of changing over from the uh, thrash machines of the day to something as far into the future as what this was, and yet it, today it is the standard. They estimate this machine was built during the 1920s. At some point it was discarded and then discovered around 1990 northeast of Winnipeg and donated to this museum about 20 years later. Hull says this machine was designed quite different from threshing machines built around the same time. Instead of having straw walkers inside to carry the straw back, it was basically like an axle flow combine in a way. It was taken back on like paddles in this case and, and air moved it as well. Was a lot of the, the movement in the machine where the thresh machine used chains and paddles, this, a lot of it was done strictly by air. Unfortunately, the blower and the rotor are missing, but for many years, Hathaway had assumed there was nothing left of the entire machine. He is surprised that his great uncle, who was a farmer, was able to produce such a well-built harvester. The blacksmithing it was done, the riveting it looks like it was done in a factory, and it was all done just in a blacksmith uh, shop on the farm, and curving the metal around the corners. Uh, you can't even feel a dint in the metal where hammers hit it. They were, it's that neat and well done, and even on the metal, on the flat metal, is curved and there's bearings not put in, but there is no dints in the, the, the frame of it anywhere. It, uh, they obviously had to be uh, quite craftsmen to do this uh, as well as that. This unit is quite a bit smaller than most threshing machines, which Hathaway believes was part of his great uncle's effort to help individual farmers. Instead of having a big threshing uh, crew and big ring, uh, each uh, person would have their own thrashing machine and be able to do their own uh, work and his belief as I understood it would be that they would get their grain off in a better condition because they're doing their own and all this uh, waiting was not uh, what he liked to see happening and he was looking at better grades and, and on the market uh, and uh, he just felt that a small machine was one for everybody, it was a, a great potential.